balance. Mm -hmm. So explain to me, in today's day and age, things have changed, as you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Over the past few thousand years in every society, pretty much every society that we look at, men went out, they hunted, they worked. Yeah. And uh, women stayed at home and they carried out these traditional roles. Now things have changed. Women have the ability to be able to go out to, to work now in the Western society throughout Europe um, and even the East as well now. Women have the ability to be able to pursue their ambitions, build their intelligence. Women have a lot of liberal freedoms now, which they did not have a few years ago. And things have totally changed. And we're experimenting day by day as we go along as a society. You're obviously based in the US and based in the UK. Things are slightly different, but generically speaking, the Western values are the Western values and we're experimenting. And I do believe that they are adding to a breakdown in society. However, having said that, I do agree with you that times have changed and you need to operate in the world you live in, not in the, in the world you want to live in. Right. Well, true intelligence is adaptability. Like if you don't, if you're going to continue to live in the past, you don't really, you're not really truly intelligent because we're not going to go back there. But, but Gia, do you know, after all this time, males have traditionally been a certain way. Women have been a certain way. Right. We have that innate within us, right? Like we have certain roles like that. We are just absolutely we see, the, we see this in statistics right like if you look at the job market if you look at child care for example it's predominantly female dominated because wow. nurturing is a part of a woman's nature okay. mm -hmm. and is it so how do we draw that line there like what you know like to be able to switch it like that it's, it's difficult right like how do you why, see, here's the thing, like why are we switching roles hmm. ask yourself that why is there this why do you think that we have this desire to switch roles that's really let's get down to the root cause because like everybody wants to talk about the two steps but they're not looking at the 10 steps okay you look at the root cause our root cause is that we are it's upbringing always comes down to upbringing okay so if we have weak parents or a weak parent raising a child mm -hmm. then naturally we're gonna have a weak child grow into a weak adult okay why are we enabling children as soon as they have a problem we're there to pick them up when they fall hmm that's not doing anything for the child the child has to fall get up on its own to become stronger right so what do we have we have a society that is enabling weak mentality it's telling us we don't need to work for anything. We can have it tomorrow. We can have sex with a girl on the first day. If she doesn't want to give it to you, walk away. Uh, you go get plastic surgery. Don't go to the gym. Everything is developing weak people. But what's causing this breakdown in the in the household? Because we no longer see mother, father. We see single parents. We see such a mix now. Uh, and... I don't want to go into the more controversial topics, but, you know, it is very different now to what it once was. And in societies, in the Eastern blocs, particularly places like even China, Russia, so on and so forth, they are carrying the more traditional values. In the West, we have changed the dynamic of the home and statistically it isn't working. Many times misguided as well, right? I believe the hype on social media. I got involved and surrounded myself with the wrong people. But what always pulled me back to a grounded space was my parents bringing up the Bible. Whenever I had questions, they would pull out the Bible and show me a scripture. So I think that we're losing that. We're losing spiritual guidance. Do you feel that having the concept of God in uh, society? You have to have more than a concept of God. You have to actually have faith. You have to mm -hmm. actually believe that there's a higher power than you. There's something beyond you, right? So once you mm -hmm. understand that things in life are done bigger than yourself and concentrate on who you are, yeah. those yeah. values, those beliefs, those boundaries, that's when things start coming into play. That's when you become successful. So Gia, you're doing uh, online, uh, sorry, you're doing coaching with people regarding their relationships. What is the most memorable individual or couple that you have coached and why? I've known some crazy, crazy bitches in my life. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> and, and what I mean by that, I have seen women be crazy. So that's why I understand why men go, oh, all, you know, women are, you all women are crazy because I have literally watched with my own eyes, 
my father, my brothers, my husband's ex-wife, you know, I've watched these women do some horrible, conniving, damaging things. And I have fought them in court. I've taken them to court. I've protected my brothers, my father with this. I have mm -hmm. raised a child that was not my own because his mother abandoned him and cheated. I have, I have, yeah. So I think that I understand, I understand where men come from, but not all women are crazy. They're unfortunately women are mirrors to their environment. And what I mean by that is if they are in a bad environment, they're going to respond like that. They're not able to really see things. Unfortunately, many are not able to see things rationally. Jim. I've got a question, just a generic question here, right? But kind of on what you're saying, you talk differently about men and women when it comes to these things. So you mentioned there that you've seen some crazy women in your time, but why is that not the same? Why is the same not apply to guys as well? Are guys, do you not meet guys who are like absolute lunatics as well? I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm defending women here, but yeah. You're right, you're right. Okay, so I have been online for well over 14 years i have mm. had hmm, some crazy things done to me falsely by men okay so i'm not alleviating any one side yeah. but when you asked me what was a memorable coaching experience that i had yeah. it was a person who had waited very very long he was very successful had a huge status he took a long time to vet he found this woman who he thought, you know, was going to be the mother of his children, got married, you know, did everything right, did the two year dating. They lived together beforehand. It, what I mean, memorable, it's something that you can't even make a, a book about stuff like this. It's so crazy, the crimes, you know. So that was the most memorable for me because I, I really opened my eyes to how, how, you know, how bad and toxic a situation can get for guys. No, I 100%, I understand where you're coming from. That's why I'm a firm believer that you do have to be around somebody when you're dating them for long periods of time. And there's no better way to get to know them by not living with them, right? Because that's how you're going to see those red flags. But yeah, so I saw the red flags. I let him know right off the bat what was going on and I disassociated myself with her. And okay. then the chips had to fall from there. But instead of blaming men or women right women are crazy men are great let's start learning how as individuals to better ourselves become better people and then filter out these people that we're surrounding ourselves with and that's what i try to tell anybody that i'm coaching so what are some of the green flags you should look for in a woman because like i think you need to approach life with a glass a glass is half full than the glass is half empty right Yes, absolutely. So one, her upbringing, her upbringing, I can't say that enough. Make sure she has a good relationship with both her mom and her dad. See okay. if her mom and dad have been divorced. Hmm. See if she was raised by a single parent. Mm -hmm. From there, ask if she wants to have children. Ask if she wants to have pets. I always say if a man or woman right off the bat is like, no, I don't want a dog or I don't want a cat or I don't want a kid. That's like a huge, that shows selfishness. If somebody okay. says that, beware. Okay. Um, th then, you know, certain things like how are they treating the people around them? Who do they hang out with? Do Does she go out with regularly with girlfriends? And are those girlfriends all single or are they married, right? If they're all single and they got tattoos on them and they're partying at the clubs red flags so there's yeah I, I mean i don't know you want me to keep going on but <laughs> no keep going i'm interested keep going yeah so you know like how does she take care of her appearance you know is she taking care of herself hygiene wise is she does she believe in health is she drinking all the time is she smoking what, how many relationships has she had you know ask her that question you need to ask these questions in the beginning is somebody on time that's another one if you make a date with her and she's not on time, hmm. that shows selfishness. It shows that she is not thinking about the other person. She's not respecting the other person's space. And don't allow it. If she shows up late, don't, don't open the door. Don't answer the call. 
you know what? Let her know she fucked up. People need to learn that there's accountability for their actions. And if they start learning that they're going to lose something, that's when they learn. They have to lose. I think generations have genuinely changed. I know I sound like an old broken record here but i do think things have changed so drastically the things women do let forget clubs the things women do on tiktok nowadays is yes. insane it's like they're and i'm not saying all women obviously but i think some women who do this stuff is kind of animalistic and it lacks human decency yeah. and uh but i also think the guys as well are completely classless nowadays i think it, like i said it's not everybody but there is a large contingent of the younger generation who are doing things which is just completely bizarre and if you were to take them back to the 1970s people would look at this and they would scratch their heads like what am i looking at what has happened over the course of a decade is that women have to, had to get more and more raunchy to get attention it's all yeah. stems down to like we hear on Twitter, oh, this, that, the other, don't push picture. But I'm telling you, they say it and then they're right up there in, in her comments, you know, being thirsty. So it's changed over the years and women have had to do more and more and more to make their money. And that's where we fall into OnlyFans and we fall into escorts and all these girls they have literally been rewarded from this behavior. No, just me, I can speak for myself personally. I, as a man and as a person, I refuse to give validation to a woman who obviously has received countless validation from countless guys. What is the benefit going to be? It's going to be completely exactly. counterintuitive, even if I wanted to get with her. That is not the way to do it, because how many guys have come up to her and told her, hey, you look sexy? You know, they, she'll have got that every day for the last God knows how many years. And I think it's not the way to go about it. Exactly. What age, Gia, is the best time for a man to get married in your eyes? Oh, hmm. I think men uh, need to take their time. I think men can be, I've seen, you know, seen men wait to their 50s to get married, like that one client that I was telling you about. But the only thing that I warn men on is the more and more you get used to social norms like you get used to liberal norms right you can yeah, have yeah yeah women freely doing things that aren't conducive to a relationship the more mm -hmm. it's going to be harder for you to move into a relationship so you get used to it you get used to society right. and the liberal norms and you can't exit outside of what you're used to exactly. you can't adjust to it you're used to beware because that is going to enter into your relationship and then now you have the baggage coming into the the relationship and that's where the problem stems like i think that a lot of the relationship advice that you see online it sounds good on paper, but as soon as you take it out in real the real world, it doesn't work. You know, like, yes, it would be great for every man to find a 20 year old virgin, right? Who never was online, never had an Instagram profile. And that would be, it sounds beautiful. It's a great idea, but does it actually extend into real life? You know, I see all these men going outside of the United States. They're going Asia, UK, wherever. They're trying to find these women. They're bringing these women back. These women are manipulating them, getting them married, getting pregnant right away, and then doing the same thing that a Western woman is going to do to them. So we have to be a little bit better than that. More intriguing question then on the back of that. What age should a man be looking for in a woman? You know, the less experiences that she's had, in other words, the the less baggage she's had, the better you are. When whoever you are as a person, you're gonna attract that energy in return. So if you have bad morals, you are selfish, you are a jerk, well, guess what? You're gonna find a woman who's selfish and a jerk. So wh however you are as a person, you're going to find the same thing in return. Do you believe in the concept that women are in their peak value? And I'm just going to say this outright that I am not, and you can disagree. I don't agree with this whole high value, high woman thing. I think it's BS, to be honest. Uh, I think that it's individual by individual. I don't think money defines your value. I think there's a lot of things that define someone's value. And this is not because of my own financial status. Like I've done all right for well for myself. And um, I don't, but I just genuinely don't believe that money is the thing. I've met a lot of rich, wealthy people. Let me tell you, like as you go um, up the stratosphere of wealth, you meet a lot more dickheads than you do, um, you know, when you're 
I'll give you an example. When I'm tra training in a high posh end area and uh, the gym is very upmarket, I don't gel with them people. When I go to a gym which is a backstreet gym and some of them guys are uh, very rough, very masculine, maybe some of them might be drug dealers, but I will find that I get along with them a lot better. They are far more down to earth. They're more likely to be loyal in my opinion as well. And they're more grounded people. Uh, I just genuinely believe that. And I think that this whole high value man, high value woman thing is BS, but it's a, label. You, it's a label, isn't it? Right. That's exactly what I mean. It's a label. But do you think generically speaking that women peak in value at a certain age or round about a certain age? Well, because it comes down to having children. So if a woman is, you know, out of her, you know, you, we already know that it's best to have a child in your twenties even mid thirties, like past that, you are risking your health to have a child. So that's what this comes down to. It comes down to women who are waiting to their thirties and then all of a sudden the time clicks, oh, I need to find somebody now. No, you should have thought about that in your twenties. But do you not think like late twenties, early thirties is where a woman matures mentally and she's actually ready to settle down. And also they'll be from a different generation to a girl who's mm -hmm. let's say 22 years old, 21 year old. She will have a very different mindset. At 17, I knew what I wanted. I worked hard. I had my bank. I had my first house at 18 years old. But that was a different day and age, right? It was a different day and age. Oh, it was a different no. era. No, I don't believe in that. I, I stand firm. I don't believe in that. I've met, I've met, had conversations, had friendships with women. And I'm telling you that I have seen women 30, 35, 36, 38, still have the mental state of where I was when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And there's no excuse for immaturity. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, to subscribe to this. Well, she has got to grow and know herself. Mm. No, if they have good upbringing and they've been taught from a good mother and a good father, women know what they want early on. And if she yeah. doesn't, it's because she's had a poor upbringing. The whole thing about women and the age thing, what is your opinion on it? I want to hear yours. Wow, Gia, you're testing me. Okay, look, I'll tell you. I think that when a woman is between the ages of, let's say, below the age of 25, I think she's born in a certain day and era where things have drastically changed. She's brought up around social media. She's brought up around norms, which are, which didn't exist a few years ago. And I think there is a significant difference in the generation. I have um, a lot of friends that I went high school with who are happily married and have children now, and their mindsets are completely different to a girl who's 22, 23. Um, having said that, I do agree with you that having children is um, a major thing, but I think that there is a sweet cut off point and i do believe that if you you know find a good girl between the ages of 20 and 25 with good good morals good ethics and you or you find a girl who's got good morals and ethics between the ages of 25 maybe 30 32 that sort of age is okay you are obviously risking the children factor and their health but in reality, as you said yourself, right, this isn't a laboratory experiment. This is real life. And it's difficult to go out there and find a girl who it ticks all these different boxes. So if you are lucky and you do find anybody, you have to sometimes sacrifice, right? If you find the perfect woman and she is about 29, 30, 32, I think you should go for it. I think that if you find a girl who's 22 and she's perfect, if you're not settling with her, then you're an idiot. And I think that's where, where, how I break it down. I like your perspective. I love that perspective because it comes down to that. It comes down to you're not going to have perfection in no. anything you do. I, I, I don't have a perfect marriage. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. No, you're never going to have perfection. And if that's what you're searching for, then you might as well just be used to being alone. I could tell you now, Gia, I remember when I went to high school and the girls in my high school the ones which we thought were bad eggs, if you put them in today's society, they would be the best of the best, the creme de la creme. And nowadays it's completely bizarre, the percentage of getting a woman who's, like, I'm not even talking about, like, oh, is she a virgin? No, I'm just saying, like, a normal person. You don't see normal people out there. The guys, and, and this is the thing, we're talking about a notch count, or if um, if the girl has a notch count below 30, below 30? What are you? Are you serious? Like, is this what we? I, I didn't think that we ever come to I still am not convinced that everything on social media is true. 
when I go out in the real world and I talk to people, I can have conversations with all sorts of mindsets and we can all have discussions, civil discussions. But as soon as we go on social media, it's this, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Do, do you know what the other thing is as well, Gio, right? Do you know this whole high value man concept? I'll tell you something, right? I have the confidence to be able to walk up to any woman and I don't care, right? I will speak to them, whatever their height, whatever their age. I have the confidence to be able to do that. I have that. But let me tell you, the issue comes when you have wealth and you are going up to women like randomly like that. You're, what type of woman are you going to speak to? Where are you going? Are you, in, are you in a club? Are you in a bar? Are you in a shisha bar? Where are you? Are you on the street? You know, what are the chances of you meeting a woman who's going to be good for your life very very minimal so to, especially in today's day and age so this whole high value thing as you go up the echelons of wealth and of success, you have a good physique they, they, yeah. they, they're gonna get if you if look okay right like i'm in decent shape if i was to if a woman is attracted to me solely for my shape what happens the day where i'm i don't know i break my leg or something happens to me i man i lose my physique is she gonna run off with another guy who's got a better physique than me with it what makes her high value, what makes him high value, because everybody has their their perception of what is high value. It's interesting this is, because when you, do I really want to go into the, okay, let's go down the rabbit hole, okay. Right, I haven't spoken about religion myself on this channel yet, but. Yeah. Well, no, 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 I mean, it's up to you, you can leave it out. <laughs> I'll, 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 we'll go into it a little bit. I think for myself, with, with, with regards to religion, I have found that people with religious, principles they tend to get through life's challenges a lot better than those without it because there is um maybe it's a fear of god maybe it's uh you know the belief in the afterlife and that you know acknowledging and that and, and maybe it's something larger than that maybe it I, think is so. I, think it's both. I think that well, that's why we're seeing a lot of suicides uh, male suicides that people are giving up they're they're losing hope and i think that's really what we need in the world is that everyone needs to change per individual and that's how we make real changes I will say this, I have met several people who, from the boxing world to uh, influencers, and I think that we live in a day and age now where many people judge a person's value by their followers and their hype. But I'll tell you something else as well, that this is just my personal perception. People of uh, faith, of religion, don't always function like that. I mean, obviously you do get some, but I do think that religion also plays a role in that and faith plays a role in that. And I think a belief in God as well does impact that. Um, it's been an interesting journey for me going through these podcasts with people and I'm growing as I go along, but this is what I feel. Um, so, yeah. How, tell me, what is your background? Like, when did you start podcasting? When did you get involved in it, with all of this? Okay, so I started this channel uh, about, I think, nine years ago. I started doing just talking about boxing on a personal channel, and um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was, must have been about 19, 20 years old, talking rubbish and talking about boxing. And then I had, um, I don't know if you know the boxer, Amir Khan? Yes. So um, Amir Khan tweeted me. We had a bit of back and forth, and there was a bit of an argument there. But I was an advocate for Amir Khan's supporter, and um, spoke to him on the phone. And he was like, "Why don't you come down and do an interview with me?" You know, I got the bad, bad end of the stick, stick, and I went and did my first interview with Amir Khan. That kicked off, and then from Amir Khan, I interviewed Tyson Fury. After I interviewed Tyson Fury, I did interviews with Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, and I went on this rabbit hole, right, like of this journey at like 20, 21 years old by, by that time. I was very young and um, I started doing interviews with all these boxers and back in them days, it was the social media world was very different and I didn't know what I was doing. And um, I did that for a few years and it blew up. It did quite well, but um, I decided I wanted to take some time out. I wanted to pursue my studies. I wanted to do a master's. I did a master's in investment and finance and I took time out of the whole game. And um, I'm, I, I still like boxing, but it's not really what I want to do now. I felt like I've grown a lot. I've read a lot. I've experienced a lot. So I'm on this different pursuit now, but I still have a lot of connections. And, in, in, you know, when, when you're in that boxing world, you meet different people. And I've still got some of them same um, skills which uh, are required to we're on a social media platform. So um, I've re-kicked things back up uh, and we'll see how things go. So that's like a brief summary of my journey, Gia. Did you, did you feel like your initial pursuit wasn't really, was taking you more away from who you were at, like as an individual and trying to steer you into what they want and that's what made you go into the podcast world? Like you were able to really help people the way you wanted to going toward podcasts? I feel like 
as you get older, you change as an individual and boxing is a sport, which I will always love boxing, but it's no longer the person I am and it no longer serves my purpose of what I want to do in life. And I do believe there, there's a book called Ikigai that you need to, uh, it's a Japanese philosophy of finding something that you love, something that impacts people, something that you can make money off and something that's realistic as well. So I'm, I feel like this is my calling. This is my Ikigai. So this is why I've got into it. I, I, you hear like, oh, women need to stay out of the podcast world. And if they really want to make a difference, they need to do this or whatever, whatever right? Like I, you hear that online because I hear that. Oh, stay out of the podcasting world. You're not making a change. But I think that what we're failing to understand is that people want to be, they want to be able to talk about things. They want to be able to get guidance from people. And that's why podcasts are so impactful because they need an outlet. They need to find answers. And so I don't think that we should be like only, you know, guys beyond podcasts or only girl. I think we need more people who are genuine and actually want to help. We need more people doing that. And it, it can, I, can I run something by you though, Gia, since you're a woman? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have found that I've, I've tried to focus on men's excellence. And the reason being is this, I don't have a lot of female viewers and I, I'm, I'm being presumptuous here, but I assume it's because women are not into the things which men are into they are just coherently different when i did boxing i didn't ask for females not to join the pot to not follow the channel uh, and i find that when i talk about these topics it's predominantly men who are following me it is not women um i mean there are a sm there is a small contingent of women who are following but i just do i do also believe that women are obviously women are into makeup and i'm no i'm stereotyping there but women are into makeup women are into beauty they're into this so a large proportion of what they watch will be related to that so the majority, I would say over 89% of the women online are very much in, in their bubbles. I call in their, they're not aware of anything else going on around them. There's, it's, it's the reason why they use filters. It's the reason why they get involved with the beauty products because they're so concentrated on their physical appearance that they aren't working and prioritizing their being, who they are. And so until you can concentrate on your true being, is when you can start helping people because you have to be vulnerable enough to say, I fucked up, I made mistakes, I'm not perfect. Uh, you know, you have to be no filters and women don't wanna do that. They wanna be, you know, put up on pedestals. And this is where you're right. It's very hard for any man online to not turn misogynistic because I've been called misogynistic for just pointing out the facts of women. And I have vowed always, even before social media, that I was never been like that. I, I just, I don't know. I, people say I care too much, that I should care less. I don't think so. I think that we need more people that care. I think that the word misogynist is thrown around so much. And I didn't know what this word was a few months ago. Like I'm being honest with you, I didn't know what a misogynist was, um, and I, I, I would definitely not categorize myself as a mis misogynistic person. I think a lot of people who are called misogynists online, again, it's a label, and I hate these labels for that particular reason because it's easy to. Th yeah. There's something I've spoken about this in the past that there's something called an evil man theory that if a leader does something wrong, they get categorized as everything that they've done is completely wrong. And that's just simply not the case. And we attach labels to people to not listen to everything that they've got to say. Um, I'm not going to mention names in the political world, but there are definitely figures. Obviously, there's um, a very well-known ex-president in the United States who also gets thrown a certain label and attachments. And there's influencers, very famous influencers. Oh, is it Trump? Is it Trump? Yeah, yeah, but this is this is it, right? Like you can't you can't label people with you know it's and and it's just accusations, right? And there's things which are thrown and there's agendas behind it. There's, there's so much involved in it. But when you attach a label to someone, it just doesn't work. And I think that we throw around labels so much nowadays, Gosh. and that's what's that, that is a large component as to what is destroying society. You're a misogynist. You're sexist. Um, you're you know you're a fascist you can't carry beliefs and opinions and i do believe certain opinions can be dangerous i, I do believe there is a fine line there but we've just gone into a crazy world well and, and so just a touch back where you said that women do have different interests than men so that's you are right about that and I, that's why i'm a firm believer that women and men can't be friends 
because why would you want to be friends with somebody who doesn't even share in the same interest as you? Like, women unless are more like, empathetic yeah. though, and you can speak to women about things that you can't talk to guys about. Exactly. But then you're running in dangerous territory there, right? Because if you're talking about your relationship problems, then Charles <laughs> Cryon is no longer yeah. just Charles Cryon, right? I will say though, you know, when I used to do just primarily modeling and I didn't get into any podcasting or YouTubes, everything was rosy and nice and everyone was nice. And as soon as I start talking and touching on real topics, that's when I can tell you the matrix bites back because it doesn't want you. It wants women to be perceived a certain way and men to be perceived another way. It wants the divide. So as soon as a woman comes in that has any voice beyond what they want, the narrative, they attack you. And I can tell you that I have had, you know, some things stolen from me and my husband that never should have been in the media use. They're using that against me right now. Mm. And, like um, when I tell you that the matrix is real and they will attack truth, it's 100% real. It's interesting. I've been battling with that sort of concept of this, of the matrix. I do have an understanding of the way, a vague understanding. Uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be lying if I said I have a deep understanding because in reality to have a deep understanding about this stuff, you really have to go down a rabbit hole. But I believe that you should cre curate the reality around you, focus on those around you and your life rather than focusing on what's going on macro level. I think you should have a touch on what's going on in the world of politics, you should have an idea of business, you should have an idea of what technologies are developing but the whole point is to make your life better and the life of your loved ones you should not be overly concerned with what's going on in the world if your shit isn't in order that's exactly. what i truly believe exactly 100 percent. Gia, lovely speaking to you